So you wanna get into airbrushing, but you're on a budget, no problem. This video will give you some tips on how you can do so. Let's get into it right now. So if this is the first time that you're gonna try airbrushing, then you can grab yourself something like this. It's really cheap, usually under 20 bucks off Amazon. And this is gonna get you started. It's still double action. So you're pressing down for air, pulling back for paint. But if you really are unsure, you can pick one of these up. And if you don't like it, then you haven't wasted a lot of your money. Just keep in mind, these aren't going to to last as well as a branded brush, nor are they gonna perform as well. This is really just a great idea to give airbrushing a go, see if you like it, and then you can make up your mind from there. So if you do have a little bit more money in the budget and you wanna take it a little bit more seriously, or you've already had a go of an airbrush and you know that you're gonna enjoy it, but you don't wanna spend $800 on a Micron, then you could go for something like the Awada Neo, the HPCN. In Australia, they're between the $120 to $150 mark. I think in the US, you can still pick them up at around 70 US dollars. I'll pop some links in the description below to all of the products that I'm talking about to help you out. So check that out if you are interested. But this is a great double action airbrush. It's a reputable brand and it's one that I've used in my classes for many years and something that you can easily get spare parts for and it's gonna last you a lot longer than one of those cheap red ones or any of the other cheaper brushes that are out there. So the next brush that I'd really recommend is the Awada Eclipse. This one has a 0.35 mil needle nozzle set up. So does the HPCN Neo that I just mentioned earlier. But this one is Japanese made. The Neo is cheaper, it's made for Awada, but it's made in Taiwan. Now retail on this one in Australia, anywhere from sort of 220 to 250, Keep in mind these prices are fairly current at the time of recording this video and this one in the US you'll find under the $200 mark. This brush is a workhorse. You can definitely get fine detail out of this no problem at all if you over thin your paint and reduce your PSI. I have loads of videos explaining how to do that. So if you do have the money in the budget this is one that I would recommend. And this one here is the GSI Krios PS289. This one runs a 0.3 mil needle nozzle setup and it also has a Mac valve which is nice and handy. Now this one 120 US dollars from Spray Gunner. It's a great brush, Japanese made, and I do use this one just as much as I use my Eclipse. So either or is a great option for all beginners. Even if you're a professional artist, this is still a great brush for your collection. Performs really well and at a great price. So keep that in mind. I'm really enjoying using all of the Krios brushes that I have. So with airbrushing, a lot of people think that you need a specific airbrush compressor like this Awada IS975. This is a a great unit and one that I highly recommend however it is expensive the reason for that it does also have a tank which is really important if you are going to purchase a compressor it also depends on what you're doing if you're only doing say cake decorating and miniatures then you can definitely get away with the smaller units but for any sort of artwork and long-term airbrushing where you're airbrushing for hours on end I highly recommend a tank like this unit has here the other benefit of these is that it's fairly silent. So if I click that on now, that's as noisy as it gets. So if you're working in an apartment or you're really close to your neighbors and you don't want to upset them, then this is something that you would want to go for. But this video is all about saving your money. So if you do already have a compressor, there's no need to go for something like this. You can pick up any sort of compressor from a hardware store and that will do the job, no problem at all. The only thing that I would recommend is that you fit a moisture trap closest to where you're working. So you can see with my setup, I've got that moisture trap and regulator fitted right near my bench. And then I've got my multi-plug here to hook up all my different airbrushes. Obviously you don't need the multi-plug if you're only using one airbrush, but I like to have a moisture trap regulator at the closest point to where I'm airbrushing. I've also got another one on my compressor. And the other tip when purchasing a compressor, if you don't already have one and you do want to go to a hardware store to grab one, I personally think the belt drive ones are the best and that's what I work with. And I've got one with about a 150 litre tank on it. That way it doesn't turn on a lot when I'm airbrushing because the tank holds such a large volume of air. I'm only using between between 18 to 30 PSI when I'm airbrushing. So I generally get about 20 minutes use out of 
my compressor before it turns on and makes a horrible loud noise. So always look at the highest horsepower that you can get as well as the largest tank and if you can get a belt drive. If you can't that's fine get a direct drive either one will work but you can pick up regular workshop compressors for easily under $200 and then that way you've got a little bit more money to spend on other things such as paint and some other accessories that I'm going to talk about next. Another thing that you can consider especially if you're not needing to use lots of PSI and you're just doing real fine work like I said the cake decorators, makeup artists as well as miniature painters they can get away with using something like this which is just a little battery unit and charges with a USB. Something like this you can hook your airbrush up to it you'll get about 45 minutes of working time out of that and that way you don't need to buy a compressor. And these are fairly cheap online on Amazon. I think they're around about the 70 US dollars and they usually come with an airbrush as well. Now once you've got your airbrush and your compressor sorted, the next thing you're gonna need is paint. The best way to save some money when buying paint, find a brand that you like. For instance, I love using the Trident colors. These are just a water-based non-toxic airbrush paint. You can use them straight out of the bottle, but I like to mix them at a minimum ratio of one to one, so equal parts. So for example, a 50 mil bottle like this, you would get at least 100 mil of usable paint. And this one here is 250 mil, you'd get 500 mil of paint. It doesn't look like a lot of paint, but trust me, it goes a long way with the airbrush. The airbrush atomizer is so fine that you can pretty much just get away with buying 50 mil colors, and that's gonna go a very, very long way, especially with something like Trident, which can be over thinned. Trident also do 10 mil colors, which is a great option if you just wanna give it a go. And those 10 mil colors from Trident come in a kit like this, so you can get all sorts of kits. This one here is just the flesh tone set. They also generally come with a reducer concentrate, so this 10 mil reducer you mix with bottled water that's going to make up a hundred mil of usable reducer so this is a great way to buy them a kit like this flesh tone set is 29.95 at the time of recording that's australian dollars and for as low as 20 dollars you could get the primary set which obviously comes with your primary colors. And to give you an idea, this is the 50 mil primary set. And this one at the time of recording comes in at 59.95. So great value if you just wanna get into it and give it a go. You can mix up all your colors and that way you're gonna save yourself a lot of money. This one in particular also comes with four of these mixing bottles. So you can be straight away mixing up some of those additional colors like your flesh tones and things like that before buying them in other kits or individual which is going to cost you more money in the long run. So if you do want to get your hands on some Trident paint, you see me use it in loads of my videos, then you can purchase through our website and we ship Australia wide. However, we don't ship overseas. If you are located overseas, especially in America, then our friends at Airshot Stencils are the US distributor of Trident. So you can order it through there and also grab a couple of stencils while you're at it and they can ship it direct to you. So great product. And again, I'll pop those links in the description description below. Okay, so let's say now you've still got some money left in the budget. I've saved you some money with your airbrush choice. You've saved money on your compressor because you've already got one that you can use. So you've put that to an airbrush or you've used that to purchase your paint and you've got some spare cash. These are some of the products that I would recommend. Obviously, you're going to need an air hose. So I love using the DT110, the straight shot hose by Awada. Nice and light, super durable and just a great all-round hose. I prefer these to the braided ones but either or will work. The airbrush cleaning kit by Awada, also great. Comes with some wipes, a magnifier, which is really handy when you're trying to figure out if your nozzle is damaged. A couple of specific brushes and cleaning tools, as well as some Awada lube. I don't tend to use it. It's up to you if you wish, but it also has airbrush cleaner, which is heavily concentrated, so you can use that and comes in a nice little case so you can keep all your bits and pieces together. The one thing that I love, and you've heard me speak about this before, if you watch my videos is the nozzle wrench and you can see that is an item that I highly recommend. So if you purchase this it comes with the nozzle wrench but if you don't want to get this that's fine then go ahead and invest some money in this nozzle wrench you will not be disappointed. It will save you lots of money in broken threads as it allows you to remove the nozzle from the front of your airbrush not wrenching it with those horrible wrenches that come with your brush and risking snapping off the thread of your nozzle. The cleaning mat also a no-brainer. Use this whenever you pull your
your airbrush apart and you're not going to lose your little expensive bits and pieces. One to definitely add to your airbrush gear setup if you are going to invest a little bit more money. And then the airbrush hanger, loads of different versions available. This is just a Sparmax one, just clips to your bench. I prefer these ones and you can put your airbrushes in here. I prefer these holes instead of these ones here. The reason being is that when you put your airbrush in there, if you trip over the hose, you're not likely to pull it out. Whereas if you have it sitting in here, I can pull on that hose or trip on it and pull my airbrush out and potentially damage the front end of your airbrush. So definitely a good investment. And if you are worried about tripping over your hose, then you may want to invest in a quick connect they make it nice and easy to detach your hose and then your airbrush will sit safely in your holder. Plus it's also handy if you are switching between multiple airbrushes using only the one hose. This is just a cheapy one. You can get all sorts of expensive brands. I know a lot of people say that they have issues with the cheaper ones. Personally, I've had a pretty good run. Maybe I just got a really good batch. But um, if you're worried about it, you can definitely invest in the Awada branded ones or something of a little bit better quality. All in all, they quick connect is a definite in my opinion when setting up your airbrushing gear and the last item that i think is really important is the cleaning station again you can get a wider branded one which is really great it's got like a little rubbery disc on the bottom uh, the beauty of these is they do run the filters so you can switch these out you can see mine is really well used it does have a little holder thing there i take them off personal preference but the good thing about this it controls the overspray so definitely a good investment especially if you are airbrushing in a confined space with minimal ventilation. I will pop a video in the description discussing airbrush safety. Very important. So definitely watch that after this video. And that's going to talk about everything that you need to do to stay safe when airbrushing. So to continue your learning, be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.